Wrestlers is one of the biggest surprise hits on Netflix this year. Getting huge ratings, and I do believe it will actually be renewed for a second season. This is the show that follows OVW, the Ohio Valley Wrestling, the infamous OVW that was the prior to NXT and FCW was the breeding ground, if you will, for the next WWE superstar. That's where John Cena came from. That's where Batista came from. Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton, Shelton Benjamin. They all came up through OVW. In fact, Jim Cornette was a part of it at that time. And now Al Snow is the head chief man in charge over at OVW. And they're still running strong, both as a school and and as an independent promotion. Uh, but he is not doing it alone. He has a businessman helping him out by the name of Matt Jones. And Matt Jones was on the Busted Open podcast this week talking about the success of wrestlers. We're going to play you that clip, and then I'm going to give you my personal review of wrestlers on the back end. But first, check out Matt Jones of the show Wrestlers, talking about what it means to OVW. Well, first of all, I mean, you guys know this significantly better than I do. I did not realize when I came in, wrestling's not like any other business in mm -hmm. many ways, mm -hmm. but especially in the ways they look at outsiders. So like I've been in parts of a lot of businesses and when we would come in, a lot of times they were happy to see us. I don't know if that's always true in wrestling. I mean, I think if you're not one of the wrestling people, there's a suspicion about you. And I completely understand that. Um, I think I, I I didn't handle things perfectly at first. I treated it like it was a regular business. I sort of treated it like going, okay, everybody, let's do this, this, and this. And you just can't do that in wrestling. And I had to learn that lesson. And that was my fault. I've learned a lot in uh, my other ventures based on this. Um, I think it got better over time. Honestly, the Netflix special was how it happened because my vision was we got to have some splash. We got to have something big happen. So I came up with this idea for this Netflix show. So, so got Netflix on board, et cetera. I kept telling the wrestlers there's, they're doing this documentary on us. The cameras came, they followed us. And he, you guys know this, you've been in the business. They still didn't believe me it was going to happen. It, they honestly <laughs> thought that like they were so cynical about it that they didn't believe me. And it really wasn't until the trailer came out a month before the show came out that they were like, wow, this is real. This is really going to happen. And then wow. all of a sudden, I think they saw my greater vision and it became a lot better. And the relationship is good now. My other vision was we got to get people to remember we exist. And if we can get a documentary It'll be perfect. Now, did I expect Netflix to do it? Did I expect one of the best sports directors in the world to do it? No, but then it happened and everything fell into place and it worked. You said three years. It wasn't an overnight success. No. Like it, 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 it was. And if wrestlers, if the Netflix show doesn't come out, it might still not be a success. I mean, we yeah. were improving. But we needed a break. I mean, I'll give you an example. Like take your all show. This is a great platform. You guys wouldn't have had us on a year ago. You wouldn't have. I mean, you've had a lot of folks from our organization on, you know, Jesse and Al, et cetera. I, Al may have been on, but the rest of us, you wouldn't have had me. We needed something to kind of put us on the wrestling map. We were on the map in Kentucky, but I wanted to be on the map around the world. And this was the way to make it happen. Congrats to Matt, congrats to Al Snow, congrats to everybody involved with The Wrestler Show. A huge hit on Netflix, a huge hit for OVW, for the wrestling business in general. Now, as far as the Netflix show, like I said, I do believe they will get renewed, which is fantastic. Uh, it follows the dying, if you will, independent promotion of OVW, as ran by Al Snow. And he's kind of taken on some outside financial investors. This Matt Jones fellow that we just listened to, for example, local radio guy, car dealership guy, I think, you know, local businessman, a couple other investors. And they're coming in and they're trying to turn the business around. And there's a little bit of a butting heads. 
between, you know, the wrestling way of doing things and the business way of doing things to actually make money. Um, and then it follows a lot of the talent, too. And a lot of these talent are very interesting and some not so much, you know, uh, some quite depressing. You know, it follows, for example, Haley J, Hollywood Haley J, the big star of the show. This little white trash. She reminds me of uh, if anybody's ever watched the show Ozark. She's like Ruthie, but the wrestler. She's just a little white trash, firecracker, blonde, talks kind of uh, ghetto. And she's just, uh, you know, like a big mouth, like coming out swinging, trailer park bitch, right? Hot, though, like a dirty trailer park, a little, little dirty trailer park blondie. Um, but she's got the personality and attitude to be a star. I don't know if she's got the talent. I don't, you can't really see as much. Can't say I've gone online to watch any full matches or anything. But she's there. Her mom's there. Um, they kind of tell that story of their relationship as her mom was an independent worker as well. And uh, the cycle just continues. And it follows guys like the she guy who was in the WWE system for a little bit. Now he's out and he came to this country to be a success in wrestling. And he doubts himself and he's not sure if he will. And he gets injured and, and, and he's like OVW's top guy at the time. Uh, there's this old guy, Cash Flow. He's kind of like the washed up guy who's, you know, he started out on the scene, but he never quite made it. But he still just refuses to hang up the tights and he's still a big part of OVW. But he's not really anything in the greater scheme of pro wrestling. And it's a lot of those kind of stories. Hollywood Haley J's boyfriend, uh, Dark Storm, I think his name is or whatever, had a little bit of, you know, I think he was in TNA for, for uh, you know, a cup of coffee or something like that. And now he's still trying to make it. And it's the story of all these guys. And then it concludes with Al's big return. He comes back for one last match to pop the territory. Uh, you know, it's a little bit depressing. It's dark. It's got that beyond the mat darkness feel, you know, just the hopelessness, the dreariness, these guys that were, you know, didn't their dreams. They never made it as they dreamed, you know, their dreams never came true or these people that are out there trying to make it, but aren't necessarily succeeding yet. There's, you know, uh, drug juggies, uh, drug junkies, <laughs> juggies, um, you know, there's a character with a drug problem that ends up getting booted out of OVW. There's, it's very real life. It's a very good depiction of what it's like to be on the indie scene, to run an indie show uh, from all aspects. The business side, the booking side through Al, the business side through this Matt Jones, the talent side through the roster and all their bitching and complaining about their spots and what they're going to be doing and this and that and the other thing. I don't know if any of these people, um, Layla Gray, she was on the show and she actually did get signed to AEW. And that was uh, one of the last episodes she announced she got signed to AEW. So if you recognize her, she was on the show um, from a AEW. I think Hollywood, Hollywood Haley J, if anybody's going to make it out of here, it's going to be her based on personality alone. I don't know, even size-wise, I don't know if she'll make it as a wrestler, but she could absolutely be a manager or something. she got a big mouth. She can talk, and she gets the wrestling business. You know, She gets the showmanship of it, and she's tough. She can take a bump, take a hit. So uh, cool stuff there, and just you know to catch up with Al and see Al struggle. Al trying to run this company and struggle with his legacy. This company is his legacy, essentially. So uh, it's about seven episodes, the whole se series. Each episode's an hour long. Uh, takes you very much inside, behind the scenes of all of that. Like I said, the wrestlers, the booking, the, the business side. It's a great show that Netflix really did put together, but it's very... Uh, it's got that beyond the mat feel. It's going to kind of leave you feeling a little icky after. And so maybe it's not necessarily a binge worthy show, at least not for me to each his own. You might like it. Um, but I feel like it plays a little bit more on the darkness of the wrestling business than the, the happier upper upside of it. And it's not necessarily a good look for wrestling in all cases, but it is a good, uh, you know, it does tell good stories. And, and that's what wrestling is there for. And it, and it shows a fun, different side 
of the wrestling business that you don't get to see on the mainstream level through AEW or WWE. This is a continuation of everything that Dark Side, uh, not Dark Side, uh, Beyond the Mat was as a documentary showing that lower side. You know, and some of these guys get called up for like dark matches at AEW or whatever. And it's just that ongoing story of being a wrestler. Um, it, it's a good show. I recommend watching it if you're on the fence or if you haven't watched it all the way through, you probably should. You're going to come out. Uh, definitely the star of the show is Hollywood Haley J, Al Snow, this Matt Jones guy. I wasn't a huge fan of him at first. You know, he was definitely positioned as the outsider business guy coming in to kind of throw his two cents where it doesn't belong. But I think, you know, they tell his story, too, where he kind of earns your respect by the end. And you actually like Matt, too. And you see where he's coming from. And it's just it's a good story. It's a very good story. But it's uh, it's it's dark. It's real. And I don't want to say dark like nothing really bad happens. It's just. There's a very unglamorous side of wrestling that's portrayed and the sound, the score to it, you know, it's got the darker tones and uh, all of that. So you'll see what I mean if you watch it. But all, all in all, it's a very well-produced documentary on the rise of OVW. And I think if they get renewed, I think it'll be cool because I, this changed them. So now this is going to be a big step up for them, more exposure. Going into the next season, it's going to be hot. If they get another season. So I am excited to see that. But I would love to know what your thoughts were. Let me know down in the comments below. Did you watch the show? Did you like the show? What did you think of wrestlers on Netflix? And if you haven't, what are you waiting for? Go check that shit out. It is a good watch. It gets my thumbs up. Plus you kind of want to smash it, LJ. Let me tell you something, brother. You can check out full episodes each and every Sunday right here on this channel, dude. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to take your vitamins and say your prayers, brother.